I just want to get this straight again. You get a hold of the aircraft PA system, right? And you announce, uh, "Good afternoon, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen." This is your pilot. This is Captain. Uh, no, uh, uh, this is your pilot. pilot. I'm not feeling. I'm well. not feeling well. <laughs> I'm, I'm losing control of the aircraft. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top ten craziest things we know about Nicolas Cage. You know, I can uh, eat a peach for hours. For this list, we're looking at the wildest facts and anecdotes about this legendary actor. And these are just some of the things we know. Know any other crazy cageisms? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, The Snicker Man. What is it? What's wrong, sister? Don't be frightened. Go. My name is Edward. I'm gonna save you. Of all the movies in Nicolas Cage's filmography, the Wicker Man remake is one that's as ridiculous as it is hilariously watchable. We trapped the little old bird inside to see how long he can stand it. Now why in the hell would you let them do a sick thing like that? Many critics and audiences have taken to deriding the movie, claiming the would-be horror flick is actually an unintentional comedy. Cage, however, has a different stance. Namely, that he and director Neil Labute set out to make a black comedy in the first place. How to get burned? How to get burned? I, How to get burned? How to get burned? I don't know! We're not entirely sure that comes across in the finished product, but Cage is right in the sense that The Wicker Man is a lot funnier than it is scary. In any case, credit to Nicolas Cage for at least being able to take a movie that probably would have been blandly mediocre and make it memorable. Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! Ah! I don't have my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Number 9. Caging the Coppola That's right, his real name is Nicholas Kim Coppola. And yes, those Coppolas. It took you all of two seconds to decide to steal the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, but I didn't think I was going to personally have to tell my dad about it. The nephew of Francis Ford Coppola and Talia Shire, and the first cousin of Sofia Coppola and Jason Schwartzman, just to name a few, Nicolas Cage comes from filmmaking royalty. However, Cage sought to make his career his own. You know, you might have made it a while on the Motorcycle Boys rap. But you ain't got your brother's brains. After being credited under his real name for his first appearance as a background character in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, the actor formerly known as Nicholas Coppola took on the screen name we all know him for today. While his adoration for Superman is well known, he even named a son Kal-El. The Cage comes from another muscular superhero, Luke Cage. Really, guys? Hey, you gotta know we tried, man. The man clearly loves comics. Number 8. Cage's House of Horrors Nicolas Cage has bought a lot of crazy things over the years, but even if we had the money, few of us can say that we would deliberately buy a haunted house. And it wasn't just any haunted house either, but what's been called the most haunted house in America, the LaLaurie House. Wasn't this house owned by the guy in Face Off? Correct, the actor Nicolas Cage was a previous owner. Situated in the French Quarter of New Orleans, the rebuilt mansion gained notoriety due to its namesake, Madame LaLaurie, who murdered countless slaves in the 1800s. At that time, I thought I was going to write the great American horror novel. I was huh? inspired by Poe and Stephen King and H.P. Lovecraft, so I, I had the house because I thought maybe I'd, I'd feel something as I was writing, right. yep. but it, it didn't, it, uh, well, it's no longer with me, so that yeah. didn't happen. Yeah. Cage reportedly sought inspiration for a horror novel he was writing, which unfortunately never came to pass. He sold the house two years later in response to his financial problems, but reportedly did something similar upon sleeping in Dracula Castle to get in the mood for the Ghost Rider sequel. <sighs> Number 7. This is your Cageton speaking. Hello, I'm Captain Steele. I need you to remain in your seats with your seatbelts fastened, but you can now remove your oxygen masks. Cage has proven that going over the top can work for acting. Pranks? Maybe not so much. During an interview with David Letterman, Cage revealed that in his younger years, while on a flight with Charlie Sheen of all people, he came across the PA system and began impersonating the pilot. He spoke about how he wasn't feeling well and wasn't in control of the plane. I'm sorry. You're only allowed one carrying. <laughs> I'm sorry, Captain, that's bad. Patty thought it was funny. 
Well, if you have any more bad jokes, you can come and find me. Obviously, this joke was in very poor taste, even more so today. But it does speak to the insane legend of Nicolas Cage and the crazy situations he's gotten himself out of. The pilot, the pilot, pilot came out know, and I'm not feeling well. <laughs> <laughs> and understandably, he was very angry. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I quote, he said, quote, not cool, not f cool. Uh -huh. end quote. We wonder if this incident had any bearing on the time one of his characters was also almost thrown in airport jail. Please, sir, if you don't get back on the what? I'll be arrested, put in airport jail. Just get your ticket and move on, okay? Get your goddamn ticket and move on! Yeah. Number six, many marriages. As of 2021, Nicolas Cage has wed five times. Would you like to come in? Yes. He first got hitched to fellow Oscar winner Patricia Arquette in 1995. As speculated upon as their marriage was, their courtship is even more interesting, as both Cage and actor Crispin Glover reportedly proposed the day they met Arquette. Cage then began proving his worthiness by tracking down rare things like J.D. Salinger's autograph and a non-existent black orchid. That's incredible, uh, though. Yeah. I mean, that he was able to procure those. Yeah, I know, And I then know. did you ever date? Then we dated. And then we broke up. It was just too fast and too much for me at that time. I was 19. Cage next married Lisa Marie Presley, daughter of Elvis Presley in 2002. Though he got to see the private section of Graceland, their divorce was filed three months later. I'll be sad and blue. It still wasn't his shortest marriage, though, as Cage filed for annulment in 2019, just four days after marrying one Erica Koike. Number 5. The Trespasser and the Fudgesicle We're not surprised that an idiosyncratic personality such as Cage's would draw in some weird individuals. Heck, there's also that time he was stalked on the set of Bringing Out the Dead by a mime. Why are you following me? Because you can barely walk. As creepy as mimes can be, this one takes the cake. Or rather, fudgesicle. While promoting the movie Trespass, Cage related a similar experience whereby he awoke in the middle of the night to find a stranger wearing his jacket and nothing else eating a fudgesicle. Go away, goddammit! You know, I'm just trying to do something. Thankfully, Cage was able to calmly lead the man out of the house before the police arrived. Cage understandably claimed that he wouldn't stay in that house afterwards, but we want to know if the jacket was the one he wore in Wild at Heart. Did I ever tell you that this here jacket represents a symbol of my individuality and my belief in personal freedom? About 50,000 times. Number four, his octopus teacher. Uh, how was your summer? Did you do anything uh, special? Well, actually, it's funny you should you should uh, ask me that because you, you, you know I have an interest in zoology, I, I think. Nicolas Cage has owned a lot of out there pets over the years, from sharks to crocodiles to cobras. What's in the bag? A shark or something? But Cage has always made it a mission to find inspiration in the crazy things in his life. For instance, he said the cobras would try to hypnotize him before attacking, which he then imitated in his performance in the second Ghost Rider movie. But the animal acting coach we want to learn more about is his octopus. The octopus, which reportedly cost $150,000, was rumored to have been bought by Cage specifically to help with his acting. Seeing as one is an invertebrate and one isn't, we're not too sure how Cage incorporated its mannerisms, but we will definitely keep that in mind when watching his future performances. <laughs> Number 3. Dinosaur Skull at this point, Nicolas Cage owning a dinosaur skull seems pretty on brand with his spending habits. Is this supposed to be me? It's grotesque. I'll give you 20000 for it. Indeed. Cage put up a whopping $276,000 for the skull of a Tyrannosaurus batar, a relative of the T Rex, at an auction in 2007. Oh, and the person he outbid for the skull? 
Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh! <laughs> to the man with the exceptional beard. Of course, this kind of spending only helped Cage be buried in debt around the turn of the 2010s, but his woes didn't stop there. Apparently, it was revealed that the skull had been stolen prior to his purchase. Like a good sport, Cage agreed to have it returned to its country of origin, Mongolia. But he never did see any of that $276,000. Oh well. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. I feel like my skull's on fire, but I'm good. Number two, Pyramid Tomb. Okay, who wants to go down the creepy tunnel inside the tomb first? Nicolas Cage has stated that he never plans to retire, which is great news. But he's never said he doesn't plan to die. If by any chance I get like flustered, you know, when I'm hurtling through space and, and, and I pull the red one first. Oh, man, you're going to wind up looking like a well-done chili burger. They're going to have to shovel you into a coffin. In fact, Cage has his burial arrangements laid out well in advance, as this entry brings us back to the French Quarter of New Orleans. There, a cemetery exists with a nine-foot-tall tomb in the shape of a pyramid all ready for Cage's remains. On it reads the Latin inscription, Omnia ab uno, meaning everything from one, which makes sense seeing as he's one person who's given us pretty much everything. The specifics of the tomb have largely baffled many, but whatever the reasoning, Cage won't be the only celebrity there, as he'll share land with 19th century voodoo practitioner Marie Laveau. Don't think that they didn't suffer because they did greatly. But the fate that I have planned for you will make their suffering seem as a gentle sleep. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Cage dreams of genie. A young Cage used to continually dream of a giant genie woman snatching him off the toilet a la King Kong. <laughs> cockroach cocktail. Not only did Cage really eat a cockroach in Vampire's Kiss, but it was his idea. pygmy head owner. Cage owns a collection of real shrunken pygmy heads because of course he does. Yeah, he's a thousand years old and now wow. he's just an ornament in my living room. Ooh, I love it. The Saga of Action Comics number one. Cage bought Superman's debut for $110,000 before it was stolen, recovered, then sold for $2.2 million. Well, it is important to have dreams, I guess. Yogurting me in the mood. To prepare for a love scene in Vampire's Kiss, Cage requested he have hot yogurt poured over his toes. How did you ever think of that? Oh, but why should I be so surprised? Number one, he's a vampire. I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! Okay, not really, but you gotta admit he looks suspiciously like this man from the 19th century. Let's see that again, because there are some similarities. But it's, it's slowed not... down. Yeah. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Nicolas Cage and the Holy Grail. Excuse me. Where are you going? I seek the Grail. I have seen it here in this castle. The National Treasure movies are pretty fanciful when it comes to historical accuracy, but one thing they kind of get right is Nicolas Cage's treasure hunting tendencies. I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. Back in the 2000s, Cage became fascinated with mythology, particularly the legend of the Holy Grail. This led him to purchase multiple properties during his quest, including two European castles, which alone set him back over $12 million. Cage's subsequent money troubles forced him to sell the castles in 2009, but never has he regretted those purchases, finding the value in the search itself. Come to think of it, maybe Cage isn't a vampire. Maybe he just found the grail a long time ago. It would be one answer for the captivatingly enigmatic persona that is Nicolas Cage. I'm Nick Frigger! <laughs> Whoa, okay. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.